Welcome back to another tutorial from ADSR and SilentTutorials.com. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel and you want to do that, you can at youtube.com forward slash ADSR Toots. So this is part two in your first 30 minutes using Silent. It's kind of tips and tricks and things I would have liked to have known about the synth in my first 30 minutes using it. And so this is the final 15 of that, give or take. It might go a little over just because I'm talking about the master effects section. So what I'm going to be covering today is this LCD panel part, which is where all your master effects are housed in Silent, and also the modulation section down here. And I'm not going to go in really in depth about every effect because I could do a tutorial on just the arpeggiator, for instance. Um, I could do probably a 10 minute tutorial on just the delay too. So I'm just going to cover some tips and tricks, some things I would have liked to have known from each of these effects modules. And then we'll cover this. So jumping right into it, you get seven effects in silent and then the arpeggiator. And I'm going to play this sound real quick because I want you to hear and kind of understand how central the effects are to sound design in silent. So here's the sound. And if I mess up on the on the keys, I'm my bad, but I'm playing it live. So if I turn these effects off, which is just phaser, EQ, delay, and reverb, the sound will actually get louder, so let me turn it down. But then you can hear how boring the sound is. So you can really hear that the EQ is bringing out some of the high end because it's a lead. The delay and reverb is giving it some spatial presence, and then the phaser is thickening it up. So jumping right into it, the first effect, well, the not, not the first effect, but the first box is the arpeggiator. And you can turn all these on and off by just clicking the check mark. But the arpeggiator is really in-depth. And if you guys want a whole tutorial on it, I'm more than willing to do that. Just let me know in the comments. So you get these different modes. The mode box will, will tell Silent how to play the notes in what order and how to play them as you either play them on your MIDI controller MIDI keyboard or controller, or you're kind of penciling them into your DAW. Then you have this velocity box, which is also going to tell Silent how to determine the velocity of the arpeggiation. And then you have this octave box and wrap. So right now, if I have it on up, and I have the octave set to 2, it's going to straddle between the note I'm playing and an octave higher. If I turned it on. And then the time knob is obviously going to control the time of the arpeggiation. And this gate is kind of a cool knob. In the middle, it lets through a good amount of both the arpeggiated notes and the actual sound. You can hear a little bit of the sustain coming through. Whereas if you turn the gate down, you just hear the arpeggiation. So that's kind of cool for really if you want like a really plucky arp. Uh, you have this uh, sequencer down here, and you have it has two pages. Each page has eight steps, and you can copy and paste between the two pages, which is really smart to include that. So this is where you can actually kind of input patterns. So let's say I drag box two up to positive three and box three up to positive seven. And then just as a quick note, double-clicking on any of these boxes will get the values back down to their default levels. And now if I, if I hold down a key... It's not doing anything, even though I'm messing around with the values in the trans in the transposition box. To actually activate the sequencer, you have to change your mode to step. And then I usually use step. If I'm going to be doing things in the step sequencer, I'll turn the velocity to step as well, because then I can control the velocity of my transposed steps using these velocity values. So now if I play this note, you'll hear it did it played the which is zero represents the note that you're playing second second arpeggiation steps going up three steps and it's going up seven steps now this wrap box is really really useful and i didn't know what it did for a little while using silence so let's say you have uh you just want to use that pattern over and over zero three seven zero well what you do is you just turn the wrap up to four and what it will tell this sequencer to to do is after four steps it'll go back to the beginning Let's say you wanted a five step, which would be a weird time signature, but let's just go with it. Let me turn this up to positive 12 so you can hear it. So you can, you can, you can kind of play around with that. Moving right along, the distortion module, you get five different distortion effects, and I'm not going to cover each one because that would kind of be a little tutorial in and of itself. But what I'm going to talk about is the dry wet and the amount and the amount knob. So the amount knob 
if you just want to kind of have a just warm up your sound the amount is affecting the, the harshness of the distortion so if you just want to kind of warm up your sound and make it a little bit thicker in the high end having the amount at lower values really help and then at the dry wet when it's all the way out it's playing the distortion at basically a hundred percent it's not letting through any of the dry signal so if you want if you want to if you're kind of programming a bass sound for instance and one of your pages you want like a really di digital distortion sound crank up the dry and the dry wet and the amount but play around with those uh, different types the fold back and the uh, clip are kind of cool and then bit crusher and overdrive are fairly standard for distortion modules next is the phaser and the phaser is pretty in depth too I could probably if you guys want to know the ins and outs of the phaser part let me know I could probably do a whole tutorial on that it's a six stage stereo phaser and it, and it can notch out frequencies with this center frequency knob so I'll show you what that kind of does real quick and of course you can turn up your LFO gain and rate to have it kind of go back and forth between the two but uh, the spread knob is really useful because the spread knob will actually spread out the distance between the notches in your center frequency which is really cool for a phaser and then you have this course which is a fairly basic course but it's still pretty pretty cool for thickening up sounds the main thing I want to talk about is this dual mode I feel like it's one of those things that people just click on and they don't know what's happening it basically multiplies the staging processes of the coursing by two so from single to dual so I think each stage in the coursing mode in silent has two delay lines and two LFOs so in dual mode I believe it would be four I'm not 110 percent sure on that but I'm, I'm about 99 maybe um, so it, it'll make your set what that what I'm saying is in layman terms dual mode will make your sound thicker next is the EQ and the EQ in silent is really great for um, attenuating the proper frequencies depending on what sound you've made or what sound you're making or using so with this sound you can hear that it's pretty muddy for a lead now that has the high the high frequency range that you would want in a lead sound to really pop through your mix so you can use this as just a general way of carving out the proper frequencies whether you're boosting bass or treble let me talk about these knobs real quick so you get bass bass frequency treble and treble frequency the the bass is actually a decibel value as you see and this bass frequency is a hertz so what you're doing is with this the way I had it set up I'm boosting the treble by almost 13 dBs, and the frequency I'm boosting is 1,594. Because that's bringing out the, the bulk of the sound a little bit better. So next is the delay module in the master effects section, and the delay in silent is probably one of my favorite delays of any soft synth it's just it has some really useful features that not that you don't even see in some DAWs delay so I pulled up a it's turned off though but this is what the default delay stereo delay in logic looks like and you get the similar controls delay left and right delay left and right low cut high cut low cut high cut um, you get feedback and dry and wet here's your Here's your feedback dry and wet, and then you get this crossfade and things like that. But for the most part, you don't see a smear knob in a lot of delays, and you don't see a spread and width and a ping pong button. Uh, the ping pong is pretty cool because in ping pong mode, when you check that in, it's actually creating ping pong delays, which are delays that are bouncing back and forth between left and right um, in the left and right stereo field, which is really awesome and really makes lead sounds big. Uh, and this smear knob is pretty cool. So what this smear knob is doing is if you take a real world situation where you, um, let's say you just yell, you yell in like a really wet room or some room that's really big and then you have this delay. Well, the delays aren't going to sound consistent as they, as the feedback tails through time. So certain frequencies will be attenuated differently at various points in time. So what the smear knob does is if you have it at 0%, you'll have a really digital sounding delay where all the feedbacks have the same frequency response. Whereas if you turn the smear up to 100, or 10, sorry, you'll hear that the first couple feedback of the delay tails, they actually 
have more high frequency content. And then the, the, it's kind of like EQing your your delay left and right times, which is really cool if you don't want really digital and stereo sounding delays. This spread knob, a little tip and trick for that, it only works when you're in ping pong mode. So if you're not in ping pong mode, it doesn't do anything. It only affects the spread of the ping pong delay. So if you want a really wide ping pong, it kind of spreads those out. And then you also have this width knob, which is really useful for if you are using this delay and you're using your sound in a, in a production or a track, you can use this to control the width of the delays. So you can hear that they're out really wide. And you typically wouldn't want your your delays out really wide for a lead sound because they'll, they'll become too audible. So around, I usually have it around 50 or a little lower than 50%. And then of course you have the dry wet and your other standard controls. So moving right along to the reverb, uh, just being up front, and this is just my opinion, but the reverb in silent sounds pretty digital to my ear, so I typically don't use it in a production environment. I'll use third party, but that's perfectly that's perfectly okay because if the reverb was a higher quality reverb, it would make the the CPU hit for silent much larger. But you get your standard controls like size, pre delay, width, damp, and dry and wet. The damp, of course, controlling the kind of the EQ of the of the actual. Um, reverb signal so it's a little bit brighter at zero a little bit muddier sounding at 10 uh, moving right along to the compressor just your real basic compressor but it's a really helpful sound design tool so I look at most of these effects as sound design tools not actually effects that I would use in a production I look at the EQ as not like I'm not using it to boost frequencies to make it a brand new sound I'm just using it to kind of attenuate the proper frequencies for that sound um, the delay I'll actually use kind of as an effect but for the most part they're all just kind of what I look at as sound design tools and then I will process third party if I need the sound to be bigger badder or better so the compression is a great way to, because um, it's so simple, to kind of just control the attacks and maybe some of the sustain of your sound. And I won't cover that in depth because it's a pretty basic compressor. So now we're going to head down to this modulation section, which is where you can start to make your sounds really cool and unique in silent. And you get two modulation envelopes, um, and those are right here. And you can see for the sound, let me turn on my effects again. Let me turn down the dry wet on the delay. So you can see that I have it set up to this cutoff. And what that's doing is it's, if I turn down, if I, or if I just turn this off, I have it set to cut off AB because with this sound, I have filters applied to both uh, part A and part B, so I wanted it to affect both cutoff A and B. If I turn that off, I have actually no sounds even coming through the way I have the sound set up. But um, it's also because I have the mod wheel set up. So this is what the sound would sound like. As opposed to this. It's basically allowing me, if I set up, you have all these options uh, to kind of destinations to modulate. But basically what I'm doing is I'm adding a standard ADSR envelope to the cutoff, which is really cool. So you can hear that with the attack all the way up, the cutoff opens up. It's kind of like uh, in Massive, for instance, taking a crosshair and modulating an envelope or things like that. You can achieve the same type of effects with it. So you can hear that I have the attack up, and so it's actually opening up the filter with the attack time that I have here. So it's a really great way to make your sounds kind of bigger and more expressive and playable. But I just wanted to show you that this is where you can start to play around and introduce some really cool and unique elements to your sound. Next, Silent has two low frequency oscillators or LFOs. Um, and that you have to apply them to a parameter. So let's just set it up to like cut off A B. Uh, 
that would be how you start to get your wobbles, and you can assign them to anything. We can assign them to the pan, so now our sound's, our so sound's gonna pan back and forth. Great for pads. Um, again, I, I mean, I could, if you guys want a tutorial on any of these sections that I'm glossing over, let me know and we'll do that. The distortion amount's really fun. Turn the dry wet down. So you, you can get pretty creative with some of these destinations. And then finally we have, let me turn this one off and turn back my cutoff A, B over here. So you have in the miscellaneous boxes, this is where you can assign your mod wheels for instance. So what I did was I clicked mod wheel and assigned it to my cutoff A, B. So you can see that my mod wheels all the way up and if I turn that down. Uh, you can assign that to a whole host of parameters. It's pretty much the same parameters throughout um, each of these modulation boxes. But that's basically it for your first 30 minutes in silent, or what I would have loved to have known existed in silent in my first 30 minutes. And I don't know if I talked about this in the last tutorial, so I'll just do it real quick. Here is your mono legato section. So turn that button on. You can't play chords. And then you have this portamento knob, which is glide. And you have this porta mode slide or normal. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know. And if you haven't headed on over to silenttutorials.com, do that. There's a couple more tutorials and some new sound sets and things like that. And I'll be back next week with a new tutorial.